April may not have been the best month for the Switch, but it was nice to get sort of a bit of a break so that way we could play more Animal Crossing. And we still did get a few gems like Trials of Mana. And who's to say the month of May isn't going to strike back with a bunch of hot titles? Hey, you got some mail. Mail for me at this hour? What could that be? Miyamoto sent me a letter? I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and just as I thought it was nice to have a bit of a weaker month for the Switch, just to chill, pump the brakes a little bit, and hang out, we're bringing you a list of 19 games releasing on the Switch in the month of May. This month we're packing in way more games on the list than we normally do, but there's quite a few indie, third party, and one first party title in particular that really pique our fancy. And we'll actually be providing a list of all of the games down in the description below as well. So if you see a game on this list and you happen to forget its name or something, you'll be able to quickly go there and reference it. These games will also appear in the order that they're going to be released. So with all of this out of the way, let's get onto the list. Kicking off this absolutely massive list of games on the 7th of May is a brand new runner platformer by the name of Fledgling Heroes. The art style reminds me a lot of Viva Pinata, and the music is just as charming as well. You get to pick from an absolutely adorable cast of flying friends like a hummingbird, a toucan, an owl, and many more. And even better yet is that you're able to customize their color palette as well, allowing you to create the cutest bird there ever was. The game's story mode features 90 different levels that are spread across a number of worlds, and if you happen to get bored with those, there's even a level editor that allows you to create your own custom levels, which you can then share online with your friends. And speaking of friends, Fledgling Heroes also features drop-in co-op. So if you've got someone hanging around that would like to play the game with you like these adorable ones do, then you'll be just in luck. Another title releasing on the Switch on the 7th is an arcade mountain bike racer called Lonely Mountains Downhill. While the mountain may sound like it's in the dumps and just wants a friend, I believe they're trying to say that the mountain is empty and free of other people. It's just you and the mountain with no one else to worry about. And for that reason, you can make your way down carefully to not get in any crashes and find secret spots to enjoy the scenery. Or if you find yourself to be a bit of a speed freak, you can race down for the fastest time to see where you place on the leaderboards. Just remember to be safe about it. Lonely Mountains features over 15 different trails to blaze, and you're able to customize your rider and bike to your liking. As I was making this list, Alex actually reached out to me to let me know that this game had just been announced on Switch, and he played it a while back and absolutely loved it. And now after watching the trailer a solid five or 10 times at this point, I too wanna to see what these mountains have to offer. Also launching on the 7th is a well-loved title that gained popularity over on PC. We're talking about Relic Hunters Zero Remix. This bullet hell run and gun shooter packs in an absolute boatload of levels, bosses, weapons, and in-game achievements. But what really drew me in is its chiptune soundtrack and character designs that remind me a lot of Brian Lee O'Malley's art for the Scott Pilgrim series. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm a sucker for both of those things. The game also features couch co-op for you and a friend, so if you've got a buddy who enjoys games like Enter the Gungeon, maybe you can tackle this one together. And then if we jump ahead a day on the 8th is an intriguing premise for a game called Super Mash. Now from what I've gathered, you play as this kid who's essentially trying to help revitalize his sister's brick and mortar game shop by creating custom games for her customers with this strange device that allows you to mash up multiple game genres and it randomly generates a game which you can then actually play and share online. At launch, there are said to be six different genres you can utilize. Platformers, Stealth, Action Adventure, JRPG, Shoot 'em Up, and Metroidvania, or as this game is calling it, Metrovania. As you complete the games you create, you'll unlock dev cards, which can actually be used to customize the characters, music, world, and more in the games that you generate. The premise honestly sounds pretty insane, and the devs are promising more content down the road. I'm curious how far someone can actually take their games with this. With creation tools like Dreams, RPG Maker, and Super Mario Maker, there's some tough competition. But the mashup idea is pretty unique. I'd love to see the game introduce a sprite editor down the road so that way people could get super creative with what they make. 
Flying in on the 12th is a brand new fast paced shoot 'em up called Jet Lancer. And I gotta say, the first time I caught this trailer, it took my breath away. Some of the flight maneuvers they use to dodge bullets and rockets are just insane. And if I can get close to pulling any of that off in game, I'll be happy. And I most likely will, as the game features a ton of accessibility options, much like Celeste did. So if you're having trouble getting the mechanics down or feel your fingers just aren't as fast as they used to be, slap on some modifiers and bam, just have some fun with it. Jet Lancer also features a full story mode that lets you face off against a ton of giant mechs and machine bosses. And that's kind of a unique thing for a shmup. Most shmup stories feel a little tacked on, and in this you actually play as a up and coming pilot named Ash who manages to get herself wrapped up in a plot to save the world. So if any of this interests you, go do yourself a favor, look up the trailer for Jet Lancer right now, it's an absolute treat. You won't be disappointed. Then if we take our good boy for a walk down the road a few days on the 14th, we're being treated to Best Friend Simulator, a new dog care dating simulator. And by that, I don't mean you date the dog, you adopt and bond with a dog while at the same time you try to find yourself a human partner. It's fine, you're definitely not abusing the dog's cuteness to find yourself love. Nah. It's hard to tell what some of the gameplay is actually going to be like based on the individual trailer that we've seen. Like it doesn't look that much like Nintendogs, but they do mention that there will be an additional sandbox mode where you can just hang out with your dog. And let's be real, I could honestly care less about the dating aspect of this game. I just want to hang out with a sheeb at my desk while I'm editing videos. Not saying that the dating aspect is going to be bad, I'm just excited about the dogs. Also racing its way onto the Switch on that same day is Tourist Trophy Isle of Man Ride on the Edge 2. What? Tourist Trophy is the most realistic motorbike or motorcycle simulator on the market. And while I'm not the most knowledgeable on racing games, if this Switch version looks even remotely close to its other next gen counterparts, I could be enticed to give it a shot. The game features plenty of tracks to master, motorbikes to unlock, and official riders to race as. So if you are into these sort of games, it may be worth keeping your eye on. And then on the 15th, the world-renowned Vocaloid is making her debut on Switch with Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix. This brand new entry in the rhythm game series features over 100 songs from past Diva titles, and there are even some new ones sprinkled in too. The game also features two control options. You have your standard button controls, which most will be used to, but now you can also play by waving your Joy-Con around, which from watching the trailer, that doesn't really seem like a ton of fun, but why not? It's fine that it's there. One of my favorite new features, however, is the brand new visual style. The past few Project Diva games on PS4 have gone with a more realistic approach, and I personally feel this anime style suits Miku and her crew much, much better. I've listened to a few Vocaloid tunes, but have never actually played any of these games, so if you're like me and you've always been more curious about the world of Vocaloids, this doesn't seem like a bad way to get your feet wet. Plus, there's a nifty demo over on the eShop that you can get right now. And then on the 19th, the Switch is being treated to another excellent game from the days of the Wii U. And we're of course talking about the wonderful 101 Remastered. This action-adventure beat-em-up is really one of a kind. You control a massive party of Power Ranger or Super Sentai style characters that all come together to take the form of giant weapons to fight massive bosses, they can become a bridge or a hang glider to help you traverse over large gaps, and so much more. If you're a fan of Hideki Kamiya or at least Platinum Games and missed out on this wacky title on Wii U, now is the perfect time to dive in. When it launched on Wii U back in the day, we gave it a whopping 9 out of 10, so we're excited to see how this remastered version shapes up. After being announced last year at E3, on the 26th of May, fans will finally be able to get their hands on a brand new dungeon crawler, Minecraft Dungeons. This spin-off of the traditional Minecraft series takes the form of a more family-friendly version of an RPG like Diablo. Up to four players on or offline are able to fight their way through massive dungeons in pursuit of new weapons, armor, and to save a city or I don't know, something like that. But the dungeons and the weapons, those are the big deal. Diablo was one of those games that's an excellent cooperative title, but it isn't really one you can always play around your family. So if you're one of those who grew up playing Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, this could be a great title to share with your kids if you've got them. And if you don't, it still looks like a pretty competent RPG. 
even graphically, I'm super impressed with how this looks on Switch. On the surface, Ninjala, as it's pronounced, not Ninjala, may look like a bit of a Splatoon ripoff, which honestly could be a whole conversation in itself, but on May 27th, we'll all be able to finally see what this game truly is. Ninjala is a free-to-play battle royale for up to eight players, but what really makes this unique is that it's almost entirely weapon-based, minus a few special moves, which requires you to get up close and personal with your enemies if you plan to take anyone down. You can wield weapons like katanas, hammers, and yo-yos in battle, but you also have the power of bubblegum at your side, which allows you to sprint around or hide within the map and to perform special moves. It looks super fast-paced, and if you're a fan of Splatoon and want to try changing it up with something different, this could be your next game. The Bioshock series is not just some of the best story-driven FPS games out there. They feature some of the best storytelling in gaming. And on the 29th, the Switch is getting them all in Bioshock The Collection. This package contains Bioshock 1, 2, Infinite, and all of the single-player DLC, including the absolutely wonderful Burial at Sea. These games are full of deep narratives that'll have you questioning everything by the time their stories are over. Their combat and level of intensity is something else, and the worlds that the team at Irrational Games created are full of life, even if most of the people that inhabit it just want to take it away from you. We could go on and on about these games, but if you've never played any of them, you have to start with the first one, as even today, it's an epic tale that every gamer should experience. And all of these will be available individually on the eShop if you just want to start out with one of them. Launching alongside Bioshock on the 29th is the Borderlands Legendary Collection, which includes Borderlands 1, 2, the pre-sequel, and a hefty chunk of DLC as well. The Borderlands series is known for its over-the-top action, ridiculous attitude, and the fact that they've always been co-op friendly. You can play all of these on the couch with a friend and can play up to four players online. I'm not really sure why 2K decided to release all of these games at the same time, but hey, the more the merrier. And it's also worth mentioning that you can also purchase all of these individually on the eShop if you'd prefer to do it that way as well. Also coming to the Switch on the 29th is the XCOM 2 Collection. This package contains XCOM 2, the War of the Chosen expansion, and four additional DLC packs. This tactical strategy RPG envisions a world where aliens have taken over, and you're part of a team that are planning to take everything back. Now if you've played games like Fire Emblem, you'll need to be careful stepping into XCOM, as the alien enemies are much, much more varied than the soldiers and mages you're used to fighting. But the series is well loved on other platforms, so this could be another big title for Switch owners. And last but very much not the least is the remake of the first entry in the Xenoblade series, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. In this massive RPG, you take on the role of Shulk and his trusty Monado as you face off against a mechanical race that are also attempting to take over your world. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles has been released before on 3DS, but this new remake is getting a brand new coat of paint and a special epilogue chapter to help wrap things up at the end. So even if you've sunk a hundred or so hours into the original, which came out nearly 10 years ago on the Wii in Japan, if you can believe it, it seems like there's still plenty of reason to revisit this classic. And there you have it, an absolutely massive amount of games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in the month of May that hopefully you can be excited about. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you're looking forward to getting your hands on any of these games, and let us know if you think there's any games out there that should have made it onto our list. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and uh, re-release that subscribe button on the Nintendo Switch by giving it a good old tap, and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we release new videos. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and we will see you next time. Oh.